Anin, Bojo, Sarah Hazel Dijnikas, Dibizing Donjaba. Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Hazel, and I'm a member of Nipissing First Nation. I'm also the project manager for the Canadian Archaeological Association's working group on unmarked graves. Today I'll be talking about a remote sensing technique called magnetometer survey and recommended data collection procedures for locating unmarked graves. Before we get started, I'd just like to draw your attention to our resources that are on the Canadian Archaeological Association's website, the link to which is on this slide. Um, we have a series of videos and two comprehensive guides, one technical and one non-technical, uh, that you can use um, as a companion to the videos. Unmarked graves investigations can bring up distressing content and it is important to take care of yourself mentally and emotionally while doing this work. Please make sure you have health supports in place or you can call one of the numbers on the slide if you are feeling triggered and you can speak to a health professional. And I'll just leave this up for a moment in case you'd like to write one of these numbers down. Magnetometer survey is one of several magnetic geophysical techniques that measure differences in the Earth's magnetic field and or differences in the magnetic properties of the ground. These differences can occur for numerous reasons, including instances where the ground is disturbed, as is the case when a grave is dug and refilled. This is because topsoil, the layer of Earth closest to the surface, usually has slightly higher magnetic properties than the underlying subsoil, as it contains more and different forms of iron minerals. When a grave is dug and refilled, the topsoil and subsoil are often mixed together, and as a result, the soil in the grave shaft has different magnetic properties than the surrounding area. These differences are tiny and need specialized instruments to detect them. Usually the difference is small, so sometimes identifying the grave is impossible and other approaches are needed. Magnetometer survey will therefore, in most cases, be used as a supplemental survey technique to ground penetrating radar to improve confidence in the results. Magnetometer survey will also play an important role in situating the results of GPR, particularly in instances where large areas need surveying. This is because magnetometer survey is one of the fastest geophysics approaches available, which allows for large areas to be surveyed quickly. Magnetometer surveys can identify buildings and other features that are remembered by survivors or are identified in archival records, but may no longer exist above ground. Locating where these buildings and features are on the landscape will be invaluable in helping to guide GPR investigations to areas of greatest potential. While magnetometer survey is one of the faster ground-based remote sensing techniques, it is still time consuming. The number of individuals needed to complete a survey will depend on the instrumentation used and the site conditions, including ground cover and other obstacles. Some instruments take readings more rapidly, while others might have multiple sensors, which can double or quadruple the speed of the survey. Generally, magnetometer surveys are most efficient when done by three people, one instrument operator and two assistants to move the survey ropes. Though, so, though some instruments allow for fewer individuals. We estimate that a crew of three technicians can cover an area anywhere between half to a whole football field in one day, depending on conditions and instrument used. There are a variety of magnetometers available on the market, most of which are aimed at the environmental or engineering sectors rather than archaeology. It is important, therefore, to choose an instrument that is suitable for grave detection. Flux gate gradiometers 
and alkali vapor magnetometers are often preferred for archaeology, as they allow for rapid, high-density data acquisition, and many of the commercially available instruments allow for a setup with multiple sensors. Other instruments are also suitable, but may be slower or more difficult to handle. Much will depend on what is locally available. The most important factors to consider are sensitivity and speed of the instrument. Instruments that are capable of rapid, high-density data acquisition are essential for grave detection. Magnetometer survey is performed by carrying, pushing, or pulling a magnetometer instrument back and forth within grids that have been laid out over the ground. Tapes and ropes are used to guide the operator in this process and to ensure the entire area is covered. The recommended methodology for data acquisition will differ depending on the goals of the survey. Archaeologists often differentiate between two types of survey methodology, reconnaissance and mapping. Reconnaissance is where a large area is surveyed at lower resolution to identify the general location of a large target of interest, for instance, like a cemetery. Mapping surveys are used to cover smaller areas at higher resolution to map the distribution and number of individual features, for instance, like graves within them. Given the general rapidity of magnetometer survey compared to other remote sensing techniques, communities may wish to forgo reconnaissance survey and consider investigating the entire area with a higher resolution mapping survey once they have established that the approach is applicable. For reconnaissance survey, grids should be laid out with a total station, the autolite, or a GNSS or GPS system. Grid corners should be located with a GNSS or GPS to within five centimeters accuracy. A minimum point sample density of 0.5 meters by 0.25 meters is recommended. And data collection within grids should be done using either zigzag or unidirectional. For reconnaissance survey, survey grids should be laid out with a total station theodolite or GNSS or GPS. Grid corners should be located with a GNSS or GPS to within five centimeters accuracy. A minimum point sample density of 0.5 meters by 0.25 meters is recommended. And data collection within grids should be done using either zigzag or unidirectional. For mapping survey, grids should be laid out with a total station, theodolite, or GNSS, or GPS system. Data collection within grids using unidirectional traverses is recommended to reduce collection errors. And minimum transverse spacing of 25 centimeters with inline sampling density of 12.5 centimeters or less is recommended. While many magnetometer instruments can be configured to allow data collection with an integrated GPS, most are not accurate enough to provide the resolution necessary to identify graves. It is also harder to keep track of where you have surveyed with a GPS system, leading to inconsistent data densities, and in some cases for areas to be missed entirely. The CAA therefore recommends that all magnetometer surveys are conducted within grids. Common grid sizes for magnetometer surveys are 10 meters, 20 meters, and 30, 30 meters squared. It is sometimes helpful to conduct surveys using rectangular shaped grids to avoid inadvertently confusing the orientation during processing. However, some instruments do not allow for this and errors can be avoided by accurate note taking.
Unlike GPR, targets of interest are best surveyed at approximately 30 degrees to their orientation, if this is known. However, in practice, the alignment of features is often unknown prior to the survey. Grids are more often set up in relation to obstacles or field orientations on the ground. More importantly, as magnetometer survey is likely to be used alongside GPR survey, it would be more expedient to use the same grid as the GPR survey, which should be set up perpendicular or 90 degrees to the orientation of the grave or graves, again, if this is known. The corners of the grids should be recorded with GNSS or GPS so that their location can be re-established and any features of interest identified within them. Once the survey is completed, the survey data needs to be processed in computer software to generate plots for interpretation and presentation. Options include commercial geophysics software, which usually costs around $4,000 for a single license, for example, Terra Surveyor or Geoplot, or open source software for free, for example, Snuffler. The ease of use and functionality will differ between choices. The process plots look very much like air photographs taken from above. Processing magnetometer data can require numerous steps as the Earth's magnetic field changes constantly, resulting in numerous natural effects in the data that need filtering out. Data collection incons inconsistencies are also common due to the sensitivity of the instruments. It is important that the processi processing steps are done in the correct order as each filter will affect subsequent steps. Data processing should follow the sequence of steps recommended by the instrument manufacturer and software used. These might include, but are not limited to, reviewing the raw data, clipping data to remove noise spikes that affect statistical calculations of subsequent processing steps, neutralizing ma major responses, for instance, like fences or services, removal of data collection defects like traverse stripping or staggered data, iron spike removal to eliminate very large responses of near surface metal. Caution is needed here as iron coffin fixtures and nails may be the only indicator of the presence of a burial. And finally, six, the final enhancement of data plots, including interpolation, which artificially increases the number of data points to give the data plot a smoother appearance. Magnetic survey data can be difficult to interpret and should be done by trained individuals. For example, the shape and size of the magnetic response that results from a buried feature or object may look completely different to its actual form. For instance, the size of an iron nail's magnetic response will be much larger than the nail itself and might measure up to one meter on the plot. Buried features, in particular metal pipes or fences running along property boundaries, can produce enormous responses that appear many meters wide, washing out any of the subtle detail that might be produced by graves in those areas and rendering the survey useless. Interpretation of geophysics results also inevitably includes different levels of confidence. For example, an archaeologist might assign a 70% confidence level that graves exist in a location, depending on how clear the results are. This will be based on numerous factors such as shape and size of anomaly, its magnetic response, and prior experience. This is where having other sources of evidence, such as other remote sensing techniques or survivor testimony, is beneficial as multiple lines of evidence that all point in the same direction will provide more certainty. The survey report should make a clear distinction between different levels of confidence, including inferences based on scientifically demonstrable criteria from those arising from informed speculation based on prior experience. Miigwech. Thank you for joining me for this module on magnetometer survey. Take care.